Hello and welcome to this Mithril Money Securities Investment 101 course. This is Lecture 16, The Inverted Yield Curve. I just want to go back to a previous lecture in which we saw the typical yield curve shape. And here it is, the normal shape that we see with a yield curve looks something like this. Now, just as a quick reminder, what causes this? Well, at the left-hand end, we have cash and certainty. And the right-hand end of this diagram, we have liabilities. And we have risk. And as we move from one to the other, the yield curve will go up. And in the middle here, we have opportunities. And as they occur, what we'd like to do is we'd like to have cash on the hip so we can get invested into those opportunities. And for those reasons, the yield curve forms this familiar shape. However, we must remember that it can be any shape, such as on this diagram. It can be any shape you want it to be, essentially. I don't think it can spin round, but it can pretty much be any other shape, though it does tend to revert to this normal shape. Now, one of the most dangerous and one of the most useful yield curves we see is called the inverted yield curve. And there it is here. And it's a sort of mirror image of the standard yield curve. Now, why is it so dangerous? And then also later on, we'll explain why it's so useful. Is best illustrated perhaps by a story. I want you to come with me to a strange country called Mithril Money Country. And in Mithril Money Country, we've got this kind of standard looking yield to maturity curve. Here we are. And it's just very short. It doesn't go up to 30 years, this one. It just goes from one year to about there, and it goes to two years. Now, I've exaggerated this diagram slightly, you can probably see, but hopefully that will become clear why later on. So we have time down the bottom here, and we have yields along the side, as is normal, in percentage. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's just label those up to seven. There we are. Let's have a look then at the particular yields at these particular times. So that is going to be about 1.9% for a one year yield. And this is going to be about 6% for the two year yield. Now, these two yields can probably be best shown by a new product I don't think we've talked about before called a zero coupon bond. And as the name might suggest, what a zero coupon bond is, it's a bond which has the principal payment, but no coupons. So what you can get is you can get $100 in one year's time. And that will present value back to today. And you can have a hundred dollar principal in two years time with no coupons again present valuing back to today you will basically pay less than a hundred for this one and then you will pay less than the one above again less than a hundred for the two-year one we'll work out the prices in a second so no coupons to worry about in this particular case so let's just go back to our diagram here so that first one there that's a yield of 1.9 and the second one there is at a yield of 6%. Now, in this universe, I have a special friend. And my special friend is called Professor Wen. And he travels around in a red telephone box with a yellow light on the top. And he tells me that this yield curve is going to stay exactly the same as this for at least the next two years. That gives me a rather neat strategy, or two strategies. Let's just put another timeline in here which is coming from the right, it's coming into today, where I will receive $100 in cash. And we're going to assume in this universe that we always get the $100 no matter what happens. What it means is this. If the yield curve stays exactly the same, a two-year bond that comes down to one year, in one year's time, will be exactly the same as the one-year bond is now. Let me just do that again. If I go from two years down to one year, in one year's time, the conditions will be exactly the same as they are now for the one year bond, which is about to become kind of a mature bond. So that to that, that bond will be the same as that to that. What we basically do is we roll down the yield curve over one year. 
and if it's not going to move, that two-year bond will become identical to the one-year bond now. And that means we can play around with a couple of strategies. And the strategies might be this. We buy this bond here for whatever price. And then we wait till it gets to there. And then we sell it. And when we sell it there, it should be identical to this bond. Or we can buy this bond here and we can wait till the end and then we redeem it for the $100. So either strategy works. We either buy and then sell, and it should be cheap at the right hand end and more expensive at the left hand end, or we can buy and redeem, and it will definitely be $100 at the left hand end, and it will be cheaper at the right hand end. Now all we have to do is work out prices, and given that that yield curve is fixed in space and time, according to Professor Wen, let's just quickly draw Professor Wen. He's fairly flamboyant, so, not entirely sure I trust him, but he's always been right in the past. Got a nice kind of orange scarf there. I will trust him this time, and I will build my spreadsheet, and I'll work out what to do first. So let's go to a spreadsheet I prepared earlier. Here it is here. I haven't put any interest rates in because I didn't know what they were, but there's the principal in one year of 100, and there's the principal in two years. Let's get those interest rates again. 1.9 and 6. Let's just put those in. 1.9 and 6. That gives us a price for the one-year bond of 98.14 and a price for the two-year bond of 89. We'll just quickly comment those calculation fields just so you know what's going on there. There we go. Now we can work out our profit and loss and our yields for the two different situations. OK, so we buy at 98.14, then we redeem at 100 one year later for the first situation. That's going to give us a profit of equal to the principal value, take away the price. That gives us a profit of 186 on the year. The yield then will be the profit divided by the amount we invested. So that yield for the overall deal is going to be equal to the profit there divided by the price we paid. And that gives us 1.9% yield. Now let's look at strategy two. In strategy two, we're going to buy at 89 and then sell one year later. Once we've rolled down the yield curve, we will sell one year later for 98.14. That will give us a profit of equal to that. Take away the price we paid. That gives us 914. Now let's look at the yield. It's going to be that divided by the price we paid. So equal to that divided by that gives us 10.26% yield. Much more profit made, much less money spent, much higher yield. We're going to go for strategy two, if we can be guaranteed that that is the yield curve and it's fixed in time. However, unfortunately, Professor Wen went to a wrong universe. He went to a second universe or a third universe, and he gave us the wrong figures. And just at exactly the wrong moment, exactly the wrong moment, what happened is the yield curve inverted. And we'll just put where I want the yield curve to go to make my calculations work properly. I want it to go like that. It inverted to exactly that. The interest rates of the two different bonds completely reversed. So we can see them there. What effect does that have on our strategies? Well, we can just plug those figures into our spreadsheet. So this is going to be 6. And then this is going to be 1.9. There we go. Notice the first strategy actually makes more money and makes a higher yield. However, look at the second position. The second strategy lost 1.97. If we make that a million, it lost 1.97 million. Obviously, it had a negative yield. So that is the danger of the yield curve inverting. It doesn't matter what happens with the first one. We're always going to make a profit. We're always going to get a yield. But this second one where we were riding the yield curve and we were riding it, as it rolled down from one to the other. Let's just quickly redraw that. So there's the yield curve. And what we were doing is the yields were rolling down this hill and we were riding the yield curve. And that works fantastically as long as the hill doesn't reverse. When the hill goes into reverse and does this, then we are in big trouble. So that's why the inverted yield curve is so 
dangerous. Now, I did say it's also a very useful thing. Why is it a useful thing? It's because it's normally formed in certain situations and it becomes a leading economic indicator. Let's go to yet another universe. And here we are, here you are in this other universe. And you have a choice. You can either buy a one-year bond, which has a 10% yield, or you can buy a 10-year bond, which has a 10% yield. And you don't know what to do. So should you do that or should you do that? And you decide perhaps maybe you want to go to that one because that will give you more opportunities in the future and you think it's going to be 10% forever. So you'll get your 10% in one year, then you'll decide what to do again. You're hoping it's going to be 10% again. And you look at the yield curve and it's been like that for 100 years at 10%. It's always been 10%. It's never changed. So you decide, well, I'll just go for the short term one because then I'll be closer to cash. And in one year's time, I shall then decide what to do again, and if I can't find anything interesting, I'll just reinvest at 10% again. But, as he's floating through different universes, you get a visit from Professor Wen. Let's just copy him. And he says to you this. Unbeknownst to this universe, in a short while's time, a special event is going to happen. One of these is going to land. And what's that, you say? You cry. I've never seen one of those before. It's never, ever happened in this universe. And he says, I know, it's a black swan event. And when this black swan event comes, you're going to get something else you've never seen before. You're going to get a recession. And what typically happens in recessions? And Professor Wen says, well, what's going to happen is your central bank. I'll just quickly draw a central bank here. They normally have marble columns and so on. So let's just put a few marble columns in here is going to roll something that it's never rolled before, and that's its printing press. And what it's going to do with its printing press, because it has a printing press, is it's going to print lots and lots and lots of these. And why is that important, you say? Well, what it's going to do is to stimulate the economy. According to Keynesian economics, we're going to lower interest rates. We're going to use all of this printed money out of thin air, and we are going to lower particularly short-term interest rates down to 0%. And so what do you decide to do next? Remember, none of this has actually happened. Professor Wen has been into the future, and he's told you that this is what's going to happen. It's never happened before. You've never had this particular kind of black swan. Well, let's come up with a quick strategy. Let's just get rid of all this stuff that's not happened yet, because you're the only one apart from Professor Wen who knows any of this, and he likes you for whatever reason. Let's tell you what you're going to do. What you're going to do is you're going to sell these, because you don't want to have one year at 10% and then go down to 0%. You want to have as long-term yield as possible, and so you're going to be buying as many of these as you can get your hands on to get a locked in 10 years of 10%. Now, what's going to happen to the yield curve at this particular point? We just need to draw a quick couple of diagrams, a couple of seesaws here. Here's the first seesaw. And if bond prices come down, what that means, remember, is that yields must go up. And the kind of complementary seesaw down the bottom here, if bond prices go up, then yields must come down. Mathematically, that has to happen. So what's going to happen when you sell, 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 sell lots and lots and lots of these very short-term bonds? Well, you're going to flood the market. You're going to push down the bond price. That's going to raise yields. So what's going to happen is you're going to put some force onto this yield curve and you're going to force it up at the short end. What's going to happen then when you buy, buy, buy lots of these things here? Well, you're going to push up the bond price because you'll be soaking up everything on the market and that will push down yields. You will put negative pressure on the long end of the yield curve and what you will end up with is an inverted yield curve. And remember, you're the smartest person in this universe. You've got Professor Wen advising you. You're the only one who knows this. And so, but you're forcing the yield curve because you're such a clever, big, rich person into this shape. So this is a leading economic indicator that we're going to have a recession caused by a black swan. Let's just draw a quick black swan again. There it is, coming into land from who knows where in this universe. So that's why an inverted yield curve is such a useful thing. It's a useful thing there. It's a leading economic indicator of a recession about to happen. And here it's a dangerous thing because if you're riding the yield curve, it can wipe you out.
Anyway, next time we'll be talking about credit spreads. We'll also be talking about a particular special yield curve, which some people call the riskless yield curve. Look forward to that. I'll see you next time.